the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 17 From the Book of Genesis The Marriage of Isaac and Rebekah Now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his house, who had charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell, but will go to my country and to my kindred, and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman may not be willing to follow me to this land, must I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth, and who spoke to me and swore to me, To your descendants I will give this land, he will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine, only you must not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, taking all sorts of choice gifts from his master, and he arose, and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, grant me success today, I pray thee, and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the maiden to whom I shall say, Pray let down your jar that I may drink, and who shall say, Drink, and I will water your camels, let her be the one whom thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. By this I shall know that thou hast shown steadfast love to my master. Before he had done speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar upon her shoulder. The maiden was very fair to look upon, a virgin, whom no man had known. She went down to the spring, and filled her jar, and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her, and said, Pray give me a little water to drink from your jar. She said, Drink, my lord, and she quickly let down her jar upon her hand, and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw for your camels also, until they have done drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw, and she drew for all his camels. The man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey or not. When the camels had done drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing a half shekel, and two bracelets for her arms weighing ten gold shekels, and said, Tell me whose daughter you are. Is there room in your father's house for us to lodge in? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She added, We have both straw and provender enough, and room to lodge in. The man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord, and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness toward my master. As for me, the Lord has led me in the way to the house of my master's kinsman. Then the maiden ran and told her mother's household about these things. Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran out to the man, to the spring. When he saw the ring, and the bracelets on his sister's arms, and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, thus the man spoke to me, he went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. He said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord, why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man came into the house, and Laban ungirded the camels, and gave him straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Then food was set before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. He said, Speak on. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become great, he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, men servants and maid servants, camels and asses. And Sarah my master's wife bore a son to my master when she was old and to whom he has given all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell, but you shall go to my father's house and to my kindred, and take a wife for my son. I said to my master, Perhaps the woman will not follow me, but he said to me, The Lord, before whom I walk, will send his angel with you and prosper your way, and you shall take a wife for my son from my kindred and from my father's house, then you will be free from my oath, 
when you come to my kindred, and if they will not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. I came today to the spring, and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now thou wilt prosper the way which I go, behold, I am standing by the spring of water, let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, Pray give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, Drink, and I will draw for your camels also, let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring, and drew. I said to her, Pray let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder, and said, Drink, and I will give your camels drink also. So I drank, and she gave the camels drink also. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bedouel, Nahor's son, whom Milka bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose, and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to take the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bedouel answered, The thing comes from the Lord, we cannot speak to you bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before you, take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself to the earth before the Lord. And the servant brought forth jewelry of silver and of gold, and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah, he also gave to her brother and to her mother costly ornaments. And he and the men who were with him ate and drank, and they spent the night there. When they arose in the morning, he said, Send me back to my master. Her brother and her mother said, Let the maiden remain with us a while, at least ten days, after that she may go. But he said to them, Do not delay me, since the Lord has prospered my way, let me go that I may go to my master. They said, We will call the maiden and ask her. And they called Rebekah, and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. So they sent away Rebekah their sister and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah, and said to her, Our sister, be the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gate of those who hate them. Then Rebekah and her maids arose, and rode upon the camels and followed the man, thus the servant took Rebekah, and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahai Roy, and was dwelling in the Negev. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there were camels coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she alighted from the camel, and said to the servant, Who is the man yonder, walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into the tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. From the Book of Psalms Prayer for Deliverance from Persecutors A Prayer of David Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From thee let my vindication come. Let thy eyes see the right. If thou triest my heart, if thou visitest me by night, if thou testest me, thou wilt find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. With regard to the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to thy paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me, O God. Incline thy ear to me, hear my words. Wondrously show thy steadfast love, O Saviour of those who seek refuge, from their adversaries at thy right hand. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me in the shadow of thy wings, from the wicked who despoil me, my deadly enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They track me down, now they surround me. They set their eyes to cast me to the ground. They are like a lion eager to tear as a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord! Confront them, overthrow them. Deliver my life from the wicked by thy sword. From men by thy hand, O Lord! From men whose portion in life is of the world. 
May their belly be filled with what Thou hast stored up for them. May their children have more than enough. May they leave something over to their babes. As for me, I shall behold Thy face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with beholding Thy form. From the Gospel of Matthew A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master, it is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? Whom to fear? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, utter in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim upon the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's will. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So every one who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven, but whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Not peace, but a sword. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Rewards He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet because he is a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly, I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. From the Catechism Sacred Scripture in the Life of the Church And such is the force and power of the Word of God that it can serve the Church as her support and vigor, and the children of the Church as strength for their faith, food for the soul, and a pure and lasting fount of spiritual life. Hence access to Sacred Scripture ought to be open wide to the Christian faithful. Therefore, the study of the Sacred Page should be the very soul of Sacred Theology. The Ministry of the Word, too, pastoral preaching, catechetics and all forms of Christian instruction, among which the liturgical homily should hold pride of place, is healthily nourished and thrives in holiness through the word of Scripture. The Church forcefully and specifically exhorts all the Christian faithful to learn the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, by frequent reading of the Divine Scriptures. Ignorance of the Scriptures is ignorance of Christ. In brief, All sacred scripture is but one book, and this one book is Christ, because all divine scripture speaks of Christ, and all divine scripture is fulfilled in Christ. The sacred scriptures contain the Word of God and, because they are inspired, they are truly the Word of God. God is the author of sacred scripture because He inspired its human authors, He acts in them and by means of them. He thus gives assurance that their writings teach without error His saving truth. Interpretation of the inspired scripture must be attentive above all to what God wants to reveal through the sacred authors for our salvation. What comes from the Spirit is not fully understood except by the Spirit's action. The Church accepts and venerates as inspired the 46 books of the Old Testament and the 27 books of the New. The four Gospels occupy a central place because Christ Jesus is their center. The unity of the two Testaments proceeds from the unity of God's plan and His revelation. The Old Testament prepares for the New and the New Testament fulfills the Old, the two shed light on each other, both are true Word of God. 
The Church has always venerated the Divine Scriptures as she venerated the Body of the Lord, both nourish and govern the whole Christian life. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path.